Hi there. Warren Buffett is one of the most successful investors of all time. Uh, and he's probably around the top five richest men in the world with a net worth of something like 79 billion, most of which he intends to give away to good causes. In fact, he's already given away billions already to charities through the Bill Gates, down, Bill Gates Foundation, for instance. Now, yeah, he, he leads a, a very simple life compared to, to most billionaires. He doesn't have that typical billionaire lifestyle. He's lived in the same house in Omaha, Nebraska since 1958. Uh, he does have other homes, I suppose. Uh, and he once said that the lifestyle he leads could be uh, led by anybody in this day and age because we, he's got access to the same technology that, that we have. The only difference being that he does have a private jet. He admits that uh, most people can't travel around in a private jet. But other than that, he, he leads quite a simple life. Um, he, he says he eats McDonald's and uh, drinks Coke and, and this sort of stuff. So, And, and he, he doesn't necessarily go out to you know, fancy restaurants every night. So he, he's an unusual guy in, in that way. Now, the multi-billionaire is, is what you might call a value investor who invests in companies through the stock market for the long term through his holding company, Berkshire Hathaway, which has given shareholders a remarkable 20% per annum average annual return since 1965. Now, you might say, well, well, that's all OK for the stock market. But can you apply Warren Buffett's stock market investment philosophy, if you like, to property investing? Well, let, let me continue. Now, by the way, if you'd invested in uh, Berkshire Hathaway stock back in 1965, um, you could have probably bought the shares for like, ten dollars fifteen twenty dollars a share those shares now one share is worth two hundred eighty thousand dollars if you wanted to buy one share in Berkshire Hathaway now in America you can buy part of a share a fraction of a share and and but he hasn't diluted the value of the shares by uh, splitting shares and issuing more shares so they've just gone up and up and up uh, now, now basically his philosophy is that he looks to buy uh, value companies uh, Companies that have a margin of safety in, in the price. In other words, he only buys at below market value and pays no real regard to the, the sticker price or the, the, the price that's quoted on the, on the stock market. He'll wait until he can buy it at the right price. Now, that sounds very similar to, to, to most property investors, right? They're all looking to do that. In fact, his, his famous quote is, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Now, he doesn't jump in and out of the market like, day traders and, and many other investors. Instead, the, the, the wise old, what they call the sage of Omaha, patiently waits for the right deal. In fact, he's not bought much in the way of you know, large holdings of shares through, through Berkshire Hathaway for the last two years and actually got out of all of the airline investments in, in March when the market was down. Um, he didn't even buy back his own stock when the price had fallen. So, so many people say, oh, you know, has he lost his touch? Uh, I don't think so. Um, he, he's biding his time. Uh, perhaps he's waiting for another stock market fall. I, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, when I say he's waiting, he doesn't just sit there waiting and, and uh, meditating or twiddling his thumbs. He and his partner and, and staff, but his main partner is Charlie Munger, spend their days researching companies and studying balance sheets. Now, that's what they, they I don't know if they do that every day. But, you know, if you look at documentaries of him, you'll see him going into his his relatively small head office in, in Omaha, and he sits there reading paper versions of uh, um, balance sheets and company reports and shareholder letters. Uh, he's very much a reader and, and a studier, works a normal day, drives himself to work, maybe gets a McDonald's on the way and this sort of thing. Now, he's still active at 89. He's pushing 90 now, and he attracts a, a huge following amongst Share investors such as Phil Town, for instance, who uh, who teaches investment, and and at shareholder meetings are like a huge convention. They're like in a big, uh, you know, convention hall with thousands and thousands of people there, maybe twenty thousand people there, and he gets on stage and he plays ukulele and he gives his words of wisdom. He's he's very much a modern day philosopher. So, what type of companies does Warren Buffett buy through through Berkshire Hathaway? Well, surprisingly enough. He invests in fairly ordinary type of companies, you know, insurance companies, banks and credit card companies such as Goldman Sachs, Banks of America, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, American Express, Visa and MasterCard. 
he invests in uh, boring transport companies and fuel companies and perennial businesses such as Kraft Heinz, Apple, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, one of his better investments, Coca-Cola and McDonald's. Uh, businesses which some people might find a little bit boring, a little bit staid, but they tend to all have one thing in common, apart from the fact that they're, they're evergreen type of business, but they have another thing in common, which is a moat. Now, you know what a moat is around the castle, right? There's water around the castle. Having a moat protects the business from competition that, that would seek to attack and destroy the castle. So a business like um, Apple and McDonald's and Coca-Cola have very strong moat brands. You know, many people have started Coca-Cola, uh, cola companies, like, like even Richard Branson started a Virgin Cola, which sort of disappeared quietly. He didn't mention much about that. But it's very hard to break the, the Coca-Cola brand. Everyone thinks of a Coke, a Coca-Cola. Obviously, there's Pepsi as well. Even McDonald's, you know, Burger King is there and other, other companies. But, you know, that, that famous McDonald's brand is, is very, very strong. Apple, of course, uh, you know, half the world probably hold an Apple phone. He, he loves them. And so th those sort of businesses are not going to, to go out of business just because someone brings out a new phone or, or starts up a burger chain or brings out a new cheaper brand of Coca-Cola. And it could also be that customers, uh, another moat could be that customers would find it very difficult to, to switch from that company to a competitor. If you think about... Um, uh, say a bank that um, an example could be you're using a particular type of software like like Microsoft right you can't just say well uh, it's not very easy to get your laptops well I'm switching out of Microsoft I, I don't want them anymore uh, so it, it, they've got a br uh, there's brand moats and there, there's switching moats so there's various things that can protect a company another thing is that you may not have a competitor if you own a utility company and they, they are the only utility for that state or that, that area, then you can't really switch. You know, I know that in the UK you can switch from different utility companies, but water companies, for instance, you, you usually can't. But there are lots of businesses like that where, you know, maybe that that's a railroad transport company and that's the only one that goes across and that's the only, you know, you built the rails, that's it. So there are lots of companies like that, and he tends to go for those sort of companies. He also buys strong companies with you know, good balance sheets, not very much debt, excellent earnings growth. So he looks at the earnings growth, potential earnings growth, and business that he would want to hold for 10 years, even if the market were, were to close down. And one of his quotes is that, you know, if you, if you don't want to own a business for 10 years, you shouldn't even own it for 10 minutes. And he doesn't jump in and out of, of things. He doesn't jump into all oh, the latest fad or let's let's jump into this tech firm. And he certainly won't be putting his cash into things like Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, of which he once said, in terms of cryptocurrencies, generally I can say that with almost certainty that they will come to a bad ending. That's, that's, his, that's my bad impression of Warren Buffett. Now, Berkshire Hathaway owns and controls many, many businesses, but they don't run them day-to-day, -day, on a day-to-day -day basis. They're not in the management phases. He's not going around, rushing around, visiting all the, the head offices and the stores, so to speak. Their management style is very much hands-off. They leave the, the management to, to the managers. And one of the reasons they've bought into that company is, is the great management. That's another thing that they do. They, they buy companies with great management. So they're not going to go in and start tweaking things and you know messing around with with the smaller aspects of the business. They will obviously look at the figures, they'll look at the returns and, and how the business is doing, but they're not in the business day to day. So th their job is something different. Now, uh, so, so that's, that's another thing that Berkshire Hathaway does. Now, can you apply this investment philosophy to property? Well, I think, of course you can. Why not? You know, all properties want to buy properties at below market value. Everybody does, you know, they're always looking for a deal. However, very few take the time, like, like Warren Buffett, to keep researching the market in order to find that, that special deal and to, to know the market. Uh, he, he says that one of his quotes, famous quotes, is never invest in a business you can't understand. Uh, obviously, that's true. So if you're going to get into property, you should be trained in property. You should understand property inside out. You know, Warren Buffett always does his homework. He knows his business inside out. And he spent years building his knowledge learning, becoming an investor. He, he purposely went to Columbia University. 
to study under Ben Graham. He only went to that university because Ben Graham was there. And Ben Graham was, was known as the father of value investing. So he, he and he actually he made a fortune during the Great Depression when, when the market was flat for something like 10 or 20 years. So he, he purposely he followed Ben Graham and he sought out Ben Graham and studied under him. So he made sure he surrounded himself as another one of his quotes, surround yourself with the right people. He made sure he went to the best teachers and learn from from the masters of investment. And look at finding the right property. Now, if you find the right property in the right area at the right price, where you've got what, what he would call a margin of safety, uh, and, and this would give the investor an, an excellent prospect of good long term earnings. So massive upside with very little downside. So you're buying a property in, in you know the right property, something that has a good long term potential. It's got the margin of safety so that even if when I say margin of safety, if he's if he's looking at a company that he can buy at, say, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent below the sticker price, if you like, then even if that even if the market goes down, he's still got that margin of safety. And he even says that buy a stock the way you would buy a house, understand it and like it. In, in, it, it's such that you would be content to own it in absence of any market. So he's not necessarily looking at the ups and downs of the market. Uh, yes, I'm sure he, he knows where the market is, but he's not worried about that. He, he's studying the companies that he wants to buy and, and getting it for the right price at, at the right time, even if he has to wait a number of years to do that. So he's a very patient investor. He's not just jumping in. Now, another aspect of Warren's philosophy is to never lose money. In fact, one of his, his famous quotes are his two golden rules. Uh, rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. Now, th this might sound a bit strange for someone investing in, in a volatile stock market where many people lose money. Many fund managers, people investing in pension funds, don't make much money in the stock market. But not if you apply his philosophy to buying companies or properties with a margin of safety uh, you know, at the right price and with a strong moat. Now, Warren Buffett has come up with many brilliant quotes over the years. Perhaps one of his most famous is, we, we simply attempt, he says, to be fearful when others are greedy and to be greedy when others are fearful. So in other words, during maybe a stock market crash, when everyone's fearful they're selling, he would be looking to buy. And I'm sure that if there is another market crash, which many people say there, there will be, that he, he'll be watching, he'll, he'll be there watching but he'll have his list of companies that he wants to buy and he will swoop. And when the time is right, he will put everything into that. He'll, not every penny, but he, he's sitting on billions of dollars in cash. So he, he calls it loading up the truck. He will really buy big. He won't mess around buying small holdings here and there. And that's the same with property investors. If you think the market's going down, well, maybe then now's the time to do your research, to learn and, and to look for the type of property you might want to buy and then wait for the right price. Or if you think you've got it at the right price now, maybe now is the time to invest. I personally think that, you know, this many people are saying, well, there, there might be a V-shaped recovery where the market's gone down and will just come up in a V-shape. Others might say it could be a, a U-shaped, which could take longer. Uh, what could be worse is, is a W-shape where it's going up and down like this, or it could just flat line. I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't think... The, the trouble that we, we, we're in is over. I, I think that there's still much more to come. Um, you know, unemployment in the, in the UK could hit 4 million by, by the end of the year, unless we, we, we get a fast turnaround and a recovery. Um, you know, we're not out of this, this virus yet. I know that the markets uh, have gone up a little bit on, on the hopes that there's a vaccine out there. But, you know, I also read that there's six or seven different types of coronavirus. So, how can one vaccine solve all of that? And, you know, the world is going through a big change and may never go back to, the, to where it was before. So we could see a lot of unemployment and, and we're certainly seeing a lot of companies going out of business, aren't we? You've only got to look around the high street and see how many shops have closed, how many big stores have closed, big chains of companies have closed. And every day you read the paper and more and more people have been laid off. So if there is unemployment, mass unemployment, again, it could take years to recover. And people like Warren Buffett and investors will be there waiting with their cash 
uh, and they would have done their homework. They're not going to wait for the market goes down. So, oh, which stocks should we buy? Oh, let's buy this. That looks cheap. No, they've done their homework. They're buying based on value, not price, not the sticker price. And that's the same with property, isn't it? You know, you, you could look at a property. I remember one property investor telling me that he was trying to buy an old bank, uh, an old bank branch, and the, the surveyor downvalued it. So it's not really worth that. And he said the stupid surveyor didn't know that bank. Uh, he, he just valued it looking at the bricks and mortar. But that bank now today, I've turned it into a, a restaurant wine bar. It's it's worth triple the value that, that I paid for it. So, th so they know their business, they know their onions, and they'll, they'll be doing their homework during this time and then waiting for the time, for the right time to, to invest. Now, in your area, that could be now. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm personally waiting. I think, you know, we, we've got a lot more uh, trouble coming up. And this is maybe one of the reasons why Warren Buffett did not swoop and buy a load of stuff during the, the, the downturn in, in March. In fact, he was selling airlines and it could be why he didn't just invest even in his own stock when the price had gone down. So he, he's still waiting. He's a very patient investor. So, yes, the answer is you can apply Warren Buffett's investment philosophy to property investment. But, you know, look at what I've said there. Look at what, what they do. Look at doing your homework and look at learning about it so that you really know what you're doing rather than just going out and saying, let's go and buy a buy to let property and putting all your money into it. There's many ways of, of investing in property. You don't just have to, to do it on a buy to let mortgage. There's many ways of, of investing in property and you don't always have to use your own money. Warren Buffett has, has largely built his fortune on, on, on other people's money in a way. He, didn't, he, he did save money. He did make his own money. But he wouldn't have made that fortune he's made without other people investing in him and taking on investors, uh, you know, in, in his investment holding company. So if you want to know about uh, property and investing, drop me a line, charles at charleskelly.net. There are many, many seminars and courses you can do and books you can read. And, and also check out my own book, Yes, Money Can Buy Your Happiness. And, you know, if you're looking for any, any ideas on getting out of the rat race and, and surviving this, this crisis, and learning maybe how to invest in property or, or in shares, just drop me a line. So thanks for listening. And, you know, I, I would certainly Google Warren Buffett, look at some of the, the famous quotes he has and uh, look at his investment style. It's very different from what you would think uh, the average sort of fund manager would do. People think fund manager every minute they're buying and selling, buy, buy, sell, sell. No, he's very different from that. And I think you can apply that same philosophy to property. So thanks for listening. Have a great evening. And hi to everyone on, on Facebook Live. Hi, Shirley, and everybody there. Great to see you all. Uh, it's always good to, to see your comments on Facebook Live. Love, love to hear from you. And I, I hope to speak to you all again soon. Thanks very much. Bye for now.